What is up? It is Thursday, March 12, 2020, and it is 8.30 at night, so it's time for a Thursday night grind. My name is Matt, and uh, every Thursday night I grind something on the bench at the American Edge. Tonight I am super excited because I have been squawking about there's got to be a ton of these awesome old knives hanging out in the drawers. I'm here in New Hampshire in New England, and I'm just convinced that they're out there. But people don't know that they're any good because they are broken and dull as all get out and haven't been taken care of. But if we bring them back to life, they'll be some of the best knives in the kitchen. And lo and behold, some came in. So let's take a look. All right, so what we got here are a nice 10 inch chef knife. Uh, carbon steel, right? Like this is why people don't like carbon steel because it looks bad. Totally rounded over tip. The edge is totally gone and, oh, it's terrible. Handle, we're gonna bring that handle back. Uh, I'm not gonna do that one for you tonight. That one's relatively straightforward. This one would be a great project too because it's so wavy. So we're really gonna have to reprofile this knife. Little bit of tip missing, we can bring that back. Clean it right up. Looks like it spent a little time on the oven, like right near a burner. Uh, this one's a Sabatier which is a sweet knife, man. Like we get a, we get a blazing sharp edge on that and they're gonna be like, whoa, I do not need to go buy new knives. I need to sharpen the knives that I have. <clears throat> All right, this one is just a little paring knife. It does, it, I don't know if you can tell in there, it, it needs a little bit of reprofiling. Tip is bent, uh, That that's kind of tough. What happens, uh, this will be, you know, I'm not gonna be able to, this, I don't, I'm not gonna do this one for you tonight too, but. I, when the tip is just bent, like I, I generally just let that go. I sharpen it with a bent tip. I found that if I try to bend, the, bend the, just a little tip back, I end up breaking it off and then I have to uh, make it a shorter knife. Uh, but we're gonna set that one aside too and we're gonna do this one tonight. So this one is cool. This is, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. The, uh, it's a Wusthof, man. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's hard for me with the angle and the light and everything, but. Uh, you know, the tip is gone. And I did get a request to show how to repair a broken tip. And the one we did last week um, was a little broken, but not like this broken. Like this is gonna, we're gonna have to grind that out. Otherwise, like this is gonna be a sweet knife too. This is made by Wustoff back in the day when they made carbon steel knives. If they still do, you can, you can call me out on that. I'm not sure. I don't see any new Wustoffs and carbon steel coming across the bench. All right, so here's what we need to do with this knife. First off, we're gonna go over to the sink and spend a little time putting a little elbow grease into cleaning it up. Then I'm going to show you how I mark out, how I'm gonna reprofile this. Then we're gonna go over to the one by 30 and spend a little time cutting steel off of it. And then this edge is gone too. So we're, while we're doing that, we're going to cut a new uh, bevel onto this knife and then we'll come back to the edge pro and we will refine that bevel and this is just going to be a, a fantastic scream and sharp knife yeah it's it's, a, it's balanced right around there anyway i think this will be a uh, a super knife when it when it comes back and plus all the character man how many years how much how much food has this thing helped prepare for families i, I just love it i would love to see more of these knives come across the bench Okay, so to the sink. I'm gonna give you something like that. And <clears throat> so I just have a, this is a green scrubby. Get this a little wet. And I like to preserve a little, I'm using Barkeeper's Friend. We've seen this before. If you go back into the Thursday night grind, archives you'll see that we have cleaned up some carbon steel knives and uh, any of these abrasive cleaners will work in my I believe our bar keepers friend is the only one I use but I don't think it's necessarily special oh man can you see that oh gets me excited not sure what's going on here but it's coming off. Cool. 
this is where I remind you, like you can hit that little icon, the wheel looking thing and speed this video up to one and a half times because stuff like this can get a little boring. But I've found that if I just breeze over this and like, I, I just like, if I were to pre-record and then edit all these videos and just like cut this out because it's boring, there's some little thing that I'm doing right now that's gonna help someone. Um, like what I'm doing is I'm cutting all the videos that I wish I had when I was starting out. Because what you have, what you find with these edited ed videos is like they come back with a clean knife and you're like, yeah, but how'd you do it, you know? Then I wonder like how much stuff gets edited out. Uh, I don't know. That's why I feel like doing these uh, live would be good, but for some reason it haven't, hasn't bit me yet. I don't know if you can see, first off, how much cleaner it is. What we'll do is a, like a, and then, can you tell that? Like from my perspective, it's, it's just beautiful. There's a little bit of, little bit going on right here that I'm having a hard time with. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It is coming off. Let's come to this side and see what we can get, get over here. As you can see, this is definitely a step that you want to do before you sharpen it. Still, like keeping the edge on the board like this, like I really like this thing, thanks to Murray Carter and his sharpening series for getting me onto that. You can buy sink bridges and stuff, or you can just make one. If you got the skills and the resources, don't forget the spine. Ooh, gunky, gunky. Those pins, those are going to look nice. One forty seven tack eight. I don't know what that means. Let me know in the comments. All right, already that's a new knife. I mean, that's just it's just amazing. But we have barely gotten started, so let's clean that baby off. Let's go back to the bench, and I'll show you how I set my new, or how I um, set it up for cutting a new tip on. <clears throat> Slide you over here a little bit. All right, this is the old uh, sharpener uses a sharpie trick so do that on the red background for you this is where we just eyeball this i'm using a sharpie here now i found i kind of like to just color this in it helps to to me to uh, pull up the contrast so that I actually like the shape of the new knife. Can you see that? That's not bad, right? Yeah, that's not bad. 
I don't have a sweet zoom feature, but I have a, I can bring it closer to the camera feature. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just kind of make a little mark right there. That's where I want this to meet, so uh, right in here. Won't be too bad. Kind of short. What do you think here? Gonna end up with a lost about a half an inch. It's a seven and a half inch blade now. It was an eight inch. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now let us take that over to the one by thirty and put a new tip on. All right, and here's the warning, right? Well, let's go over here. This is the uh, your opportunity to turn the volume down or take your take your earplugs out because I'm going to turn the vacuum on and uh, we're actually eat, we're going to be taking quite a bit of steel, so I'd, I definitely want some suction on this. Uh, all right. I'm actually going to, I want to get you Right in the action too, if I can. Put a little light on the situation. Uh, all right, earmuffs. You should be asking right now, what grit is that? Uh, and I put the 120 on. That's actually a new 120 grit belt. And here's the thing I found with the, with all these belts when they're brand new they cut so go easy. Uh, but I've got my plan here, and I'm, I might change it as I get into it. But my plan is to use the 120 to kind of set the profile, and then swap belts, put the 240 on, and just kind of clean up the bevel with 240 before going back to the edge pro. Okay.
takes a little time, doesn't it? <clears throat> Going to the 220 belt. Some of these have uh, arrows on the inside to tell you which way they should spin. This one does not. Right, so that's super boring, isn't it? But I feel like if you really wanted to, like, if you just have no idea how to reprofile a knife, there's a bunch of little stuff in there that might have helped. So that's why I do it. And if you if you don't need it, you can just zoom to the end. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at that. What do you guys think? That come out all right? Definitely got, definitely got a tip back. Whew. So uh, there's a couple of things I hope you observed there. One was I'm always touching the, the thinnest part of the metal. When it gets warm, I dunk it in my little soup can of water. Keep it cool, brush it off, get back into it. Uh, what I can see that you cannot see is when I, when I hold the, the edge to my eye, I can see the little spots where I don't have the edge yet. And I, hopefully you kind of saw that too. Like there was one spot right here where I needed to do a couple extra passes because it wasn't to the edge yet when the rest of the knife was. All right. So hopefully that was valuable. Now let's sharpen it. <clears throat> Gonna do this at 21 degrees. Got my new Diamond Matrix 250 stone in because I wore out a Diamond Matrix stone. So you can guess in the comments below how many stones it took to wear out a Diamond Matrix. How many knives it took. I'll do a video on that in the future. That's the plan anyway if time allows. Remember how to do this? Set here, slide the guide up to this, it's over on this side. Log her down. All right, let's take a pass here. All right, we're looking good. Sometimes if you don't cut it shallow enough on the edge, on the, on the, what's the other thing? The uh, one by 30, uh, it is, Harder to build a burr up here when on the on this stone. Handle got loose there. Okay. Let's take a couple.
remember now we feel for that burr on this side. We've done both sides, feel the burr. Definitely putting a burr over there. Down the whole length of the blade, especially at the tip. Sight it, it's looking good. Come back to the first side. Feel for the burr. Down the whole thing, especially at the tip. And we got it. <clears throat> okay, we are we're cutting. On the 650. Set that on. This one's due to be replaced. This will be one of the last knives that this stone does. I got a new one of these too. I spoke quite a bit via email with Ben about um, these diamond matrix stones. So I look forward to sharing some highlights from that conversation. There are not a lot of people that wear through the diamond stones. And maybe I could be, I don't know. Definitely, it gave me some real food for thought on ways to continuously improve my systems, which I'm all about. All about that. All right, so again, just making sure I'm putting a burr up with the 650 because there was a pretty, pretty dramatic shift in stone thickness. All right, well, this is the finishing stone, so I have my own little finishing technique. So you might want to observe that again. Oh, and I love it when you guys reach out to me. So I just wanted to uh, give Trev a shout out. And Trev has a cool story. Trev is actually a, uh, a like, literally a lifelong family friend. Uh, I have uh, actually known, known each other our whole lives. Uh, but he he bought a, um, one of, like, well, let's just call it a knockoff of the Edge Pro, right? Like, I guess you could, if you were a designer you, and you were... You know, you could take it as a compliment when uh, people take your design and try to build knockoffs of it. But anyway, he bought one. He got a few knives through it and was like, this, and it didn't work out. So uh, he went out and bought a uh, splurged on the Edge Pro Apex. And so far, sounds like he's uh, particularly happy with it, which must be like, uh, I just, I've been using this, this rig for years. Um, that's really a testament to the quality of it. Okay, so did both sides here. We're gonna cut that burr off. And then do a nice little honing stroke here. All right, so there it is, folks. That is the totally repaired old school Wusthof, ready to go back to work, hopefully it will find itself in a nice knife block and not in a uh, toss around in a drawer. Yeah, man, that's good. That's gonna be fun. All right, so that is it for another Thursday Night Grind. This was a long one, right? So oh, the other thing I wanted to share with you, uh, that's an eight inch knife and a $5 grind. So that's 13 bucks. Uh, that, that was an, that was an amount of grinding that would justify a $10 grind fee in my opinion. Uh, and that would put the, now that I'm looking at like the, the dollar to hour ratio a little bit more where I like it. But the other thing, which you don't know is that this came from a really great dude. Uh, we go over to this goat, we take the kids over to the goat farm and it's, uh, it's March right now. Like oh, the goats are kidding and. We, like they they're just so good with us and our kids and like they got milk out and like we just talk about stuff and <clears throat> just really really cool like uh i i just you know the other thing that we've done lately is go over to the sawmill with the kids and like we got there and they have the 
that logging truck there. It's just a dude on a wood miser. Like it's, you know, but like, I, I love these little activities. It's our neighbors. Like there's no cost to get in. There's no lines. There's no like, it's just like, Hey man, like we want to swing by, swing by with the kids, you know? And they're totally cool. So anyway, like there's, I'm, I'm happy to just do this for him. Uh, but he's also happy to pay for it. So, uh, that is that. Okay. Um, uh, if you want to see anything, make sure you comment, please subscribe and like this channel, especially if you made it this far. It's 32 minutes long. And I will see you next week. Thanks very much.